Today, we are gonna talk about all the things you need to know before you make a move to Scottsdale, which is one of the most vibrant and exciting cities in all of the Southwest. considering making a move to Scottsdale, you need to know a few things before you do this so that you can make your transition as smooth as possible. One of the first things to know about Scottsdale is just how big it is. It is 31 miles long and about 11 and a half miles wide. And when you start looking around in Scottsdale, you'll start to notice people referring to places like South Scottsdale, Central Scottsdale, and North Scottsdale. And this really is because Scottsdale is so big and each area has its own different feel. If you would like to be a little bit more urban, then South Scottsdale might feel a little bit better to you. If you like lush green landscaping and like to be a little closer to things, but not right on top of them, then Central Scottsdale might be the right place for you. And if you would like to be surrounded by the desert as well as the mountains at a little higher elevation and still be able to get to places rather quickly, then North Scottsdale might be the place for you. Now let's get to some more specifics about the place I call home, Scottsdale, Arizona. And let's just start off with the big one that is on everybody's mind right now, and that's the real estate and housing market. Scottsdale has a wide range of housing options, from luxury estate homes in a gated community to more affordable homes to apartments and condominiums. Now keep in mind, if you're looking for luxury living but only want a condo, there are multiple different options for that in Scottsdale in a few different locations. People have always equated Arizona with affordable living. That has changed over the last few years, kind of like everywhere. But even when homes were more affordable, Scottsdale was that city that was always more expensive. Currently, if you're looking for a home in Scottsdale, the South Scottsdale area is going to have a more affordable option for you, with the average sales price at about $627,000 over the past year. When you move into that central Scottsdale location, the average price point in there for the past year was about $790,000. And when you move into the North Scottsdale area, the average price over the last year was about a million four. As I have mentioned, each neighborhood has its own unique personality and amenities. We have exclusive luxury gated communities that have not only golf, they've got dining, they've got pickleball, they've got tennis, swimming, spas, fitness facilities, horseback riding, and anything else you can think of to condos and apartments and everything in between. When looking for homes in Scottsdale, I find that people kind of hone in on one of the locations first. This is where that North Scottsdale, Central Scottsdale and South Scottsdale piece comes into play. The price points in these areas also have sometimes a determining factor on which area is going to feel more comfortable for some of the people looking to buy. And as we have already talked about, each one of these locations does have a different price point, but no matter what, if you're looking for an urban place to live or a more quiet place to live, Scottsdale has something for everyone. And with easy access to all the major freeways, it makes it a breeze to get around from anywhere you are in Scottsdale. So another thing that's important to know and is a question that often gets asked is all about our economy and our job market. Scottsdale is the center of a lot of economic activity and we have a very diverse and thriving job market. In fact, the Phoenix area as a whole was recently named the Silicon Desert because of all the tech companies that have come to the Valley. Scottsdale is also home to several large corporations and is a hub for entrepreneurship and innovation. In fact, multiple startups have actually started right here in Scottsdale and they have gained massive traction. Finance, healthcare, technology, and tourism are some of the largest employers here in the Valley, which offers job seekers plenty of opportunity. The average salary here in Scottsdale is also higher than the national average, which makes it a great place to work and live. When looking for places to live, having a strong job market is very important for the overall economic strength of the state. And this is something that the entire state worked very hard on since the 2008 housing crash, because back then our number one jobs were from construction, tourism, and call centers. These were all lower paying jobs. And this is one of the reasons why the people of Arizona got so hammered during that last recession. Now our job market is much stronger and healthier, which helps the overall economy of the entire state. And when it comes to unemployment, Phoenix actually is lower than the national average. And one of the largest employer locations in the state is at the Scottsdale Air Park. There are more people that commute to the Scottsdale Air Park to work than go to downtown Phoenix. Now I know the next one is top of mind for parents who are looking to move and have kids. 
And that is our education and schools. Quality education is a top priority for the school district in Scottsdale. And we have many top rated schools here. The city also has a wide range of charter and private schools offering parents a wide range of options for their kids' education. Now, when it comes to public schools, something that is awesome we have here for parents is something called open enrollment. This means that you can choose to enroll your child in a school outside of the boundaries of your home school. This allows you as the parent to really select the school that you feel is going to be the best fit for your child. Now you have to apply and the school has to have space, but as long as they do, you have the option to get them in. Now the other caveat there is that you will have to provide transportation to and from the school. You will not be able to participate in the publicly trans the public transportation that the school offers to all those kids that are in those homeschool districts. Something else that the Scottsdale Unified School District offers are four schools of choice. Now, these are schools that are within the district but actually have no boundaries. So this is not a homeschool for anyone. So for those who would like to enroll their kids in one of the schools of choice, all you have to do is apply then all the kids go into a lottery for each grade. And if your child is selected, you'll be notified and your child will then be able to go to that school. Having so many options for your kids to go to school is awesome, but it is also very overwhelming. But having the ability to select your school and or change the school as your child's needs, abilities, and gifts change over time is something that the parents here absolutely love. Okay, so next let's talk about the weather. Scottsdale is located in the Sonoran Desert, which means hot, dry summers and mild winters. With over 300 days of sunshine, this is the perfect place to enjoy the outdoors. Now, I don't really think it's a secret that Scottsdale and Phoenix gets hot in the summer, but I'm not really sure if those that haven't visited understand the level of hotness that we can achieve. In the summertime, we can have temperatures of 110 and sometimes 115 plus. Now, when we make the news, that means we have probably hit 110 degrees for multiple days in a row, like 10 plus days in a row. Now, this does not happen every summer. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. But the reality is in the summertime, it is just plain hot here. Now, if you have kids, one of the things that you'll start to learn are all the tricks of the trade of how to keep your car cooler, especially if your kids are still in car seats. One of my favorites was ice packs for car seats, yes, they make an ice pack for a car seat so that you can keep those metal buckles cool and not burn your child when they get back in. I'm often asked like, what do people do in the summertime when it's so hot? My response is the same thing that people do when it's cold and winter snowing outside in the winter time. We adapt. If you wanna do something outside, you learn you've gotta just do it early in the morning. Then the rest of the day you go from AC to AC, but about eight months of the year, you have perfect weather to enjoy. Now, another thing that people don't quite realize the extent that they need to pay attention to this is hydration. With the dryness heat in the sun, many people forget to drink the amount of water that they should be drinking and they start to not feel great. So don't forget to hydrate and always wear your sunscreen. So one of the next things that people often start asking about are health and safety. And these are big concerns for people, but multiple little things kind of fall in these categories. So let's go over a few. First, let's talk about our crime rate. Scottsdale has one of the lowest crime rates in the Phoenix metro area. There are cities on the outskirts of town that have a lower crime rate, but they are farther away and they are less populated. Now our crime rate has gone up over the last few years, but overall we are still much lower than the national average. Now, people often ask, do we have any natural disasters? And the answer really is, we don't really have that many natural disasters. Now we have dust storms and monsoons, and if those get really intense, your visibility can drop pretty significantly. And if you're driving, that is something to be aware of and very careful. Now you will also find some places when you're buying a house that's going to require flood insurance that sometimes people don't know about. Here's the thing, I don't know anybody that has ever needed to use their flood insurance because their home was flooded due to massive rain and a flood washing into their house. However, we do have washes, mostly in the northern section of Scottsdale, but we do have washes and when we get torrential downpours, those washes will run. So it is something to be aware of and just cautious of. And again, if you're going to buy a home and get a mortgage on it, some locations in the North Scottsdale area are going to require you to carry flood insurance on your property. And while we're talking about running washes, here in Arizona, we have what's called a stupid motorist law. What that means is that if one of those washes is running and it's going over a street, they will put up barricades that say, do not enter. If you enter and your car gets stuck and you've got to call for help, guess who has to pay them back? 
you do. Because you went entered and were told not to, you will then get the bill for all the cost required to help get you out. In other words, just don't do it. Now, something else you'll hear about often is traffic. Scottsdale is a growing city and there are areas that can get congested during peak hours. Now, I hear people complaining about the traffic, but I honestly don't feel like it's all that bad unless we've got a big event going on and there are a lot more people in town. Now, there are definitely areas that have more traffic than others. And during our snowbird season, it can get a little congested just because we have more people on the road. But as someone who grew up in Southern California, for me, the traffic here is still not anywhere close to what I dealt with in Southern California. Something else to know about when living here is that we don't have a lot of public transportation. So you will need a car to get around. Now, because of this, when you're looking at the overall cost of living, this transportation piece, it is going to add kind of another bump to that cost of living because if you really need to get around, you will need a car. Now we do have Uber and Lyft. So if you need those, we have that option, but it's probably not something that you're gonna utilize for your day-to-day -day driving. So the other thing are medical facilities. And Scottsdale has four hospitals as well as two Mayo clinics. And there are medical campuses located throughout the city. So if you're looking for specific medical care, I don't think you're gonna have to go far to find it. So the next is the overall cost of living. Scottsdale is known for its upscale lifestyle and the cost of living reflects that. Right now, the city of Scottsdale does have a higher cost of living than the national average. Those that live here love that the city has a wealth of services and amenities that are easily accessible, such as parks and recreational facilities. Now, the largest contributing factor to our overall cost of living is housing, followed by groceries. Property taxes, on the other hand, are lower than most states. And as I mentioned, transportation is something that you might not have in some other cities, but will definitely have here. And when thinking about living in the desert, you cannot forget about our wildlife. And when most people think about that, the first thing they think of are snakes. But some of the other animals you need to be aware of that also live in the desert are bobcats, coyotes, javelinas, scorpions, Gila monsters, and tarantulas. Now I know some of you might've heard that list and said, nope, this is not the place for me. I too never thought that I could live in a place where I could run into a snake daily, which is what you're thinking, right? I don't wanna see one of those every day. I can honestly say I've seen everything from the list I just mentioned, except for a Gila monster. And I've lived in Scottsdale since 2001. And I have gone years in between of not seeing any of them. So these are not things that you run into every day, but they are things you need to be aware of. Scottsdale is also known as a golf mecca from public courses all the way to exclusive luxury golf courses. And if you'd like to find out which golf course might be for you, take a look at this video. If I can answer any questions, please feel free to reach out. As always, I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.